I got the EcoFlow River Pro Portable Power Station. In this video, I'm testing this product out in three different ways. The first is in an office application. The second is with a solar panel. And then the third is going to be more of like stress testing, large inductive loads and real world condition. All right, so here's my tailgate review. Using this device as an entry level UPS. During the unboxing, I read through the manual and this is one of the coolest features I didn't know you could use this product for. So a UPS is an un interrupted power supply. What I'm doing in my office right here to test this out is I am taking everything, my computer lights, everything, unplugging it, then I'm plugging in the power station and then plugging in all of those things to the power station. How this is set up is power will flow through the power station and to all of your devices and run them. If the power were to go out within the within a fraction of a second, it's like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds, it'll transfer over electricity from, you know, power from the grid to power from the power station. In this application, it's not quite a legit UPS because a, a legit UPS, there's like no transfer time or very, very little transfer time. And it's rated for reliabilities for like medical equipment and, you know, computer servers and all that. But there's a really cool application here um, to where you could be working on projects or whatever, your office. Immediately I'm thinking, okay, garage door, power goes out, can't open your garage door, locked out of the house or power goes down and you're working from home and you need Wi-Fi and you need your computer on and you need to be able to get through the day um, even if there's a power outage for your conference calls. Any situation like that seems like this device is extremely useful. Review number two. I'm a solar panel installer so I obviously wanted to see how well this would work with solar panels. So I took a solar panel, I put it on the top of this junky shell on my truck and then wired it down through the shell and plugged it into the power station. So with the solar panels, you can put a 110 watt panel on this power station and it likes to have voltage somewhere around 12 to 24 volts. But if it's a 720 watt hour power station, let me do some math for you. And you have a 110 watt solar panel that's probably going to be producing more like 80 watts real world condition. It's feasible that you could discharge the majority of this battery and then with five sun hours a day, charge it back up. And that's kind of what I just demonstrated with um, using it on my laptop all day, cooking myself lunch on it and draining it and then setting it out with the solar panel on it for a couple hours and then having it charged all the way back up. Um, that's one place I see people get disappointed with solar panels. Like it's partly cloudy or, you know, you don't have very much time out in the sun. Those panels aren't going to produce that much electricity, but this battery is very well paired. If you have like a 110 watt panel and then you have the 720 watt hour battery, you could for sitting out in a parking lot like this in five hour period, you know, charge that battery 50%. When it came to stress testing this uh, portable power station, I really wanted to see if it could run a microwave. Just me personally being in construction and being on the go from job site to job site, it'd be just so much more efficient if I could pack myself something in a cooler, bring a microwave and heat it up on the go and not have to stop at a gas station or spend money on trashy food. I got a 700 watt microwave about, you know, 50, 60 bucks at Walmart, plugged it into the power station and it works. So generally a microwave is on a dedicated 20 amp breaker that's non GFCI and it's a thousand watt microwave. In general, in kitchens, you don't add other appliances to that circuit. That circuit is just for the microwave because the microwave does use a lot of power and you can have issues running other devices on it while the microwave's running. This microwave, I tested it and it wants to pull maybe 1300 watts. That's that's what I saw. That's what it wants to pull even though it's a 700 watt microwave. Um, when you plug it in, the power station is essentially just giving it all the power it can like it's just sitting at like the high 500 watt range um and letting the microwave go and the microwave seems like it's like not running at full capacity it's running at 600 watts not 1300 watts like i don't know you might ruin the microwave by doing this long term i don't know so let's talk about the bad so hot and cold is bad for batteries period and they don't like to operate in those conditions what I noticed is that what this battery does is when it gets too warm, it will um, 
throttle down the output and if it's too cold it won't let you discharge or charge it so that was one thing that was kind of frustrating is like early in the morning the battery was dead i plugged it into the solar panels driving around trying to get it charged up and it won't charge because it's eight degrees outside so to understand that there's the battery management system the bms and it's going to tell the battery when and what it can do it's computer controlled with lithium batteries they're they're so dangerous and volatile that you need to stay within certain parameters in order for the long-term health of the battery. I respect that the battery has a very controlled software on it that is safe because this is something that you want to have in your house, you know, on the go with you. And it is a lithium battery. So, um, I, I respect that, but yeah, that was, that's a little bit frustrating when you get it too warm and you notice this specifically on indoor conditions, when you're running a lot of power through it, fans come on and it starts getting hot. It does, you know, blow that heat through, but if you're using it indoors, that's something to know the fans noisy and it's going to turn on once it starts using a lot of power and getting warm. Okay, I didn't like that it was plastic. When I unboxed it, I was like, it feels sturdy. But I'm like, maybe some like metal finish or something. And it's it doesn't have any metal finish. After having it in the bed of my truck, riding around, like, I, like in rugged situations, I've realized that it has a really hard, strong exterior um, on it. And I don't have any worries of it breaking or anything. Other than this, there's a little flap that goes, that covers the outlets and stuff. When you look at the outlets on it, you can see that there's a slot for the prongs, but inside of there, it's just recessed. So that with a with a cord that has the ground on it, it has a place to go so you can still plug it in. There's no ground on it. When running some appliances, it really wants to be grounded. On the side of it, you'll notice there's actually a ground screw right above the, the slot for the DC for the solar panels. That's actually really cool. And let me explain an application. Let's say you wanted to run your furnace off of this. There's a long-term power outage and you have gas, but you have no electricity. Your house is freezing. You want to run your furnace. You could take a power station like like this and you could wire it up to your furnace and a lot of appliances like furnaces are a little bit picky they want to be grounded so you're going to have to leave the grounding on it or you're going to have to ground this device as well and that will allow you to run a lot of other things um, more efficiently trying this out for the first time i have to say overall i'm extremely impressed and this is a sick setup got the solar panel on the roof it's charging the battery below and the battery is able to charge all your tools keep your laptop charged even run a, a a microwave for lunch this is a very capable device that i think is worth the money because you look at batteries and they're really expensive the bigger ones you're talking ten thousand dollars and the smaller ones they just don't have any capacity to do anything that makes it worth lugging around the extra weight the the river pro at 720 watt hours expandable the 14.4 uh and having that nice 500 to 600 watt um, output puts it into a really great spot in the market. Well, thanks for watching and checking out this video. I hope this was helpful information so that you can make an informed purchase. You have an Amazon link uh, below or maybe an, a couple other product links on where you can find this. Um, I also did go to Harbor Freight, which a lot of places have those stores locally and they sold a lot of EcoFlow um, batteries. So you might be able to buy them at a, a local store as well um, if you don't want to have them shipped to you. Uh, please like the video, subscribe, comment, Comment if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next review. Oh. Eco Flow River Pro. This thing is nice.